Hey everybody, I am so excited because today I'm gonna to do another one of my scoop and fold techniques and I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about it today. Now remember, there's gonna be one big mess in the beginning, but watch till the end for a really cool result. Let me go through my colors. Black and white, violet, color shifting purple, fluorescent red, and this one is an iridescent surprise. Ready? Hi. All right, so this is a 20 by 20 inch canvas, and I'm gonna tell you about how I mix my paints first. Now I want a thicker mix for this technique because I want finer lines. Um, from my experience, I found if I uh, mix the paints too thin that I get more of a mud, you know? So we don't want that. So each of my paints is a one part paint, two parts Floetrol. Um, they're all the same consistency. I did not need to thin any of them out with water. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first off, I'm gonna do this in lines. And I love this color palette. One of my biggest fears is just, uh, make, I think one of my biggest fears would be that I didn't mix enough paint. But man, I hope I learned from my mistakes on that. After so many tries, I better have, or else, or else nothing. I'll just do it again. <laughs> All right, so black and white, and you know what? I think I want to get get my other end with black because I want to end with black. Okay, there's that, and yeah, and also with white here. Okay. And this does not need to go out perfectly. I do want them all the same length. All right, so I'm gonna start with, for the colors, let's go with the violet first. Really cool violet, this is a master's touch. I'm gonna have all my colors in the description as well as the other uh, recipe. And this color shift is badass. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. After doing this a few times, I'm realizing there's a lot of cool things you could do with this. You could do this any way you want. And it's it's kind of it's hard to really mess it up. I think this technique has you have more control over the paints what you want to do with them. So I didn't violet, da, da, da. oh, here's my iridescent surprise. And the surprise is, this I believe is the, it's a dragonfly, uh, dragonfly glaze by Folkar. It's a red, violet, and blue shift. All right, so this one's not gonna show until the painting is dry. God knows how long that's gonna take. The painting's dry, I'd say with the, uh, a week tops are dry, but I can't say they're fully cured and ready for varnish. Um, all right, let's go. How about I'm gonna add a little strip of the black and white here, just a little bit. Black and white. Can you all see? Yeah. Okay. Good. A little bit of black and white, and then I'm gonna do. Let's start again with the violet. Okay, purple. Man, this purple just does some really cool things. Really, really cool things. And uh, this fluorescent red is actually, I mixed this one myself. And this is going to be uh, deco art, um, uh, festive red, metallic festive red, plus the Liquitex fluorescent purple. Okay, all right. I feel like I have a little too much black there, so I'm gonna put, let's do some of the purple just here on the sides. Right there. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm going to add, this is the iridescent. I want this to show, so I'm just going to add a little bit around the edges, just like that. Sometimes I have a hard time getting this one to really pop. This one kind of does what it wants. It either pops or it doesn't. It's going to go where it wants, depending on uh, how it compares to the densities of the other paints. This could actually also be used as a top coat. Really cool stuff. Do I have enough paint on here? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, you know, I do want to be extra sure, so let me go ahead and I'm going to lay just a little bit more of this. Purple. And remember, all the colors that are first touch the canvas are the ones that are going to show when I uh, when I scoop and fold. It's like the bend and snap. <laughs> if anybody else has uh, seen uh, Legally Blonde, that's what I feel like I'm saying. Anybody seen Legally Blonde? Anybody? Some of y'all might be too young, and others might not just give a shit, which is totally fine. Today is Super Bowl Sunday, actually. And I heard there's like a like a football game going on at the, the at Taylor Swift's uh, boyfriend's whatever he's doing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I love to play sports, but watching sports does nothing for me at all. Anyways, I'm talking way too much. All right, now, ooh, yes, let's bend and snap. I'm sorry, scoop and fold. All right, so this is one thing I wanted to point out with this technique. All right, so when, when you're doing this, when you first scoop underneath, okay, you want to completely flip the tool over like that and go across. It's a, it's a quick, really brisk movement. Just flip your wrist and go over. Now, if you stay right here and go over, you're just gonna drizzle the paint on top. But if you want uh, some cool effects, at least from my experience, scoop underneath, get as much on the swipe tool as you can, and then fold over, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start right here, okay? See if I can get all three of those in there, the purple, the black, and the white. Okay. okay, and I scoop. Now remember, you're gonna completely turn the tool over, and you're gonna go all the way across. Okay. And remember also, swipe, get all the paint on the edges because we're going to use that. We're going to use that to get all the other paint off, okay? All right, now, let's do, let's do this right here, okay? Right there. All the way get that color to really show. All right, and scoop and fold. Right, let's get that red to show up. That iridescent right there. All right, scoop and fold. Okay, remember underneath you want to flip over like that and go across. Okay. All right, and. I generally like to do one side and then turn it over and do the other, but I'll get more into that. Okay, scoop. All right, we're gonna flip again and fold. Nice. As long as I don't mess anything up, you know. Scoop and fold. All right, really cool. So now that I got this side, I'm gonna turn this around. Since I am right-handed, I'm going from right to left, okay? And 
I'm gonna start start down here, okay? Scoop. And fold. Of course I'm gonna say it about 50 million times before this painting is over. Right, and let's see if I can get some of that purple right there. Scoop. And fold. Okay, and maybe let's get this part right here. Scoop and fold. Now to get the bulk of this painting, I use the bigger tool. But once I start wanting to get some finer lines, which I will get into, I'll use a smaller tool. Okay. Scoop and fold. Kind of helps me to say it, you know. How's everybody doing today? I didn't even bother to ask. How y'all doing? Good? All right? Let me know. Let me know. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay. And let's go in here. Scoop and fold. Scoop and fold. I think this is an awesome technique for, for anybody, beginner, advanced, because you can always level this up. Okay. Scoop and fold. Scoop and fold. I don't like that one, so I'm gonna redo it. Scoop. Come on. And fold. Actually, I do like it. Change my mind. It's a Gemini thing. We just always change our mind, you know. Okay, so now that I got most of this scooped and folded and bended and snapped. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna use a smaller tool, okay? So I have this little itty bitty tool. And with this, I want to create some fine lines. So same rule with this. You want to completely go underneath and then completely flip this over and go across. Okay. Flip here, go across here. It's one quick, swift movement. Okay. Um, how about, I don't even know where to start. Where do you think I should start? How about, ooh, let's get this purple right here. Okay. Scoop and fold. So this side here, scoop and fold. See those nice little thinner lines? You can really play with this a lot, actually, and that's what I really love about it. Ooh, that's cool. I kind of like that black and white line going across like that. Let's see if I can do it again. Scoop and fold. This purple is coming off the canvas, and I don't want to waste it too much. Okay, so how about let's do this? Um, okay, let's get some of this red out here to show. How about that? And the iridescent that's a cool, cool blend. All right, scoop and fold, scoop and fold. Boop. Scoop and fold. Let's do this right here. Right there, one and two. Still want finer lines, all right? Scoop and fold. Okay. 
shifting purple is contrasting with the black. What a mess. I'm gonna fix it. Don't worry. Calm down. Um, all right. Let's get right there. One, and two. Let's get that right there. Let's get some of that red right there. I think I'm ready to start tilting. Yep, I think so. All right, so before tilting, remember, you want, you want to take all the paint and you want to push it towards center of the center of the air to the side of the, the main design that's going to spread. Because remember, all of this is going to disappear. Gonna spread it off. When I first started doing fluid art, I would never mix enough paint to cover the canvas. The calculations were wrong, it was just, uh, and I'm surprisingly really good at math, yet I just never made enough paint. And now I feel like I'm compensating for that in the last year or so of doing fluid art by mixing too much paint. But you know what? It's better to have too much than not enough. So, if I'm doing my calculations and then it's telling me that I need a total of 20 ounces of paint for, for you know, for a canvas of this size, I'm probably going to do 30 ounces. You know what? It actually never fails and there's times where it's even still almost to a point where it's not enough. There's several different formulas out there for calculating how much paint you're gonna need. This corner right here is not covered, but it's okay because I can just probably use some of that color shifting purple to cover it. I'm not gonna risk the entire design to cover a corner when all I can do is touch it up. Actually, this is pretty cool. Not mad about it at all. Awesome lines here, and the iridescent, when this dries, is gonna show up completely. I like the way the uh, the purple and the red kind of blended a little bit and made some uh, pink lines. I like the contrast of colors, and I'm not gonna touch it. Nope, nope, it's gonna dry. And here is the dry result of this painting. I'm loving the color shift and the way the iridescent is popping up. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments section. Until next time, bye.